Hello beautiful people. As most of you know, if you've been a subscriber to my channel for a while, I've been skating transition for majority of my life. If you're new here, consider subscribing. Today we're going to be talking about the best complete skateboard setup for skateboarding transition. I've had this board for a while in specifics. So I'm not going to be going into price details or setting up a board or anything of that nature. Kind of just talking about my current setup, why I like it, what I'm really enjoying about it, and maybe things that you can consider when you're trying to either buy a complete skateboard setup for transition or just gift different things to uh, help your transition skateboarding. And I'm actually, I was, or still kind of am an advocate of having just one board that you can skate everything with, but I've actually recently, a while back, set up a complete slappy skateboard setup with like 215. I made a whole video about this skateboard, setting it up from scratch. I'll leave a link up above. I'm not gonna go too much into this, but more so the point is I used to only have one board and I only want one board now. I have like multiple boards. I feel like I have another one in there too with the rubber grip. It's it's getting crazy now, but this skateboard in particular, I am loving it. We'll start with the board because that is the last thing that I got and probably need to get a new one maybe soon just because i have these really really long pressure cracks pressure cracks are basically where the truck is and you get these cracks that go up vertically with your skateboard so yeah this is a polar skateboard nick bracero board it is an 8.8 .8, which is a little bit bigger than i normally ride i ride like an 8.5 typically if i have like a a go-to size for a transition skateboard. Normally it's an 8.5 but this one is an 8.8 .8. and i really like it because it is a pretty mellow tail i like a really mellow tail and the nose is still pretty mellow too it's not super high but it is kind of a bigger nose and nice and round i like skating shade boards sometimes but i kind of want with the popsicle this one does taper a little bit though like the tail feels like it's not squared but it does feel like it kind of tapers in just ever so slightly so it's pretty much a popsicle shape i definitely like a square tail for doing tail blocks and stuff like that but i think it can limit you with even different tricks like airs and stuff you just have to do them differently so yeah, I like a popsicle setup for skating transition. If you have to pick like the best all terrain, I would say like an 8.5 to an 8.8. .8. This board in particular has been lasting quite a long time. Like I said, this is two months wear and tear. And uh, I got some Paradox grip tape on there. That's that sparkly grip. Quite a few people have asked what the grip tape is. This is Paradox grip tape from San Diego. Pretty sure Shake Junk made some grip tape that was like this and then they made it afterwards. It has nothing to do with the transition skateboard setup, but that's just the grip tape I have on my board. I feel like I have to mention it. These are actually different rails than I normally ride. I normally ride very thin rails. I've actually, in a previous video setting up the skateboard, I mentioned how I like the thin rails. I like a little bit of tension grabbing on the board. I don't want it to just be all rail, but I decided to switch it up. Like I said, I'm not like super keen to just keeping the one board forever one thing that i like i like mixing it up so this time i actually got bones rails and these rails are a little bit higher they're like half a finger high i mean i don't know exactly how high but as you can see there's no touching to my board that's why the graphic has stayed completely good the way it is and at first it was really hard to get used to because i kind of like i said like that tension i normally like a little bit of grab on my board slides or lip sides and sliding in the middle of the board but I've gotten used to it and I've really liked it. And I've worn these down to where there's like little grooves, not too much of a groove, but there is like some grooves in the back of the rails. I also use glue. I did make a video setting this board up. Actually, I'll leave a link up above to that video. I was talking more about the Jessup and Nike grip tape, but the trucks I'm riding right now are some aces. They're not the new aces, unfortunately. I got these right before the new aces came out. They are pretty awesome i'm pretty hyped on their size 55 all black and i have the stock bushings on it you know i used to like geek out on bushings so hard but now my magic formula or, or my i guess like psychology to trucks and how to break in trucks especially indies aces anything we'll go more into like the aces in particular why i started and try them and what i think of them but i think the trick is to not tighten them or loosen them when you get them like you almost have to skate them for like a day or two. And then you're basically letting the bushes sort of curate to your skating and how you churn your sharpness. Because if you start cranking your trucks down right away, when you have new trucks, a lot of times that's what ruins the bushings. It's just tightening your trucks right away. So like break in the bushings before you start tightening your trucks at all. Now the really hard part with that is that with these trucks, they came so loose, at least for me, because indies are a lot stiffer when you set them up. You can skate them and not tighten them or loosen them and skate them forever. That's how I do it. But with these, I definitely had to tighten them like after two sessions because I was just like, okay, this is crazy. I'm all over the place. Even the first session, actually, I take it back. 
the first session i think i did like one churn on them and that was it because i didn't want to mess up the bushing so yeah i've slowly tightened them as i've broken them in and now they're pretty good and i would say that they churn sharper but they still just are as tight as my independent trucks were. Like a lot of people think that you have to like loose trucks if you ride Ace, and that's not necessarily true. It probably is a little bit true. Like most likely if you ride loose trucks, you're gonna enjoy Aces better for a fact. If you're someone that's like super tight trucks, you're probably not gonna enjoy Aces. The point of that is because Aces turn a lot sharper. They're such a more like precise churn. They just churn so much sharper. So if you're not a loose per trucks person, you probably don't like that sharp type of churn. So I really like it. I feel like there's just more geometry. They're more precise, especially like recently skating pulls in there. I feel like I was able to like kind of just get through the shallow one a lot easier than I normally would be able to. And they grind really good. I have noticed it doesn't get quite as good of a groove or I haven't been able to get quite as good of a groove in the back of the truck. And I don't know if that's just cause like they're already so round. And that's just like a good thing the way they're wearing down but it's almost just flattening out more than it is making a groove but then again i've only had this board for a few months so i think over time i'll probably be able to get a better groove in there but overall i really like ace trucks i think they turn really good i think the bushings are great it's just all about how you break in the bushings when it comes to bushings that's really what it all comes down to you could switch them out with your old bushings and then try to just skate them right away but I mean, people have all sorts of different techniques and stuff like that. You can leave your comments down below with your, your bushing hacks, but I'm trying not to go too crazy with it anymore. Now, when it comes down to the wheels, I haven't always been a split fire person. I'll be honest with you. I think split fire wheels pretty much sucked up until they came out with this formula because before this formula, I think it was just really good marketing. They had an amazing team. They had great uh, branding and cool graphics and cool colors all over the wheels. The point is before Formula 4, that's the formula of these wheels, I didn't think they were quite, I don't know, just good wheels. So now Formula 4 is out, they're, they're the best wheels, in my opinion, like out right now that I've skated. I could skate a lot of different wheels, but maybe I should just try some other wheels. Somebody mentioned, so the company I was just thinking about is called NFG Manufacturing. So apparently, I don't know if the rumors are true. I don't know, maybe we can get a hold of them or something at some point, but apparently, the person that invented the Formula 4 formula this urethane in this wheel started NFG Manufacturing, which is another wheel company. So I do kind of want to try those wheels. Let me know any other wheels I should try because I am pretty hyped on these wheels. But as you can tell right now, like I have chips on the side of the wheels. They're pretty squared off. And that's when you know it's normally time to get some freshies. And you can rotate them. That's something I used to do is like halfway through the life of my wheels, you can rotate them especially like skiing transition, doing a lot of carbs, you can get like a whole nother life out of your wheels if you do it in the right time, but I didn't do it. I'm definitely gonna get some new wheels soon, but these have been holding up for so long and they started at 58 millimeters. Now they're probably like around 55s, maybe 54s. I kind of skated, maybe not, they're probably like 55s now. I've skated down quite a bit though. And then inside my wheels, I have the Bronson basic bearings, which are really good. I mean, so, and this board is just treating me really, really good. I know like, I didn't go into too many specifics, but yeah, 58 millimeter wheels, again, 55 Ace Truck, 8.8 .8 Polar Board, Bronson, and then hardware. I think I'm just using some like sharp shop hardware and then Paradox Grip Tape. That's basically what my setup is right now. For anybody wondering, I was asking, I'm loving it. This is a really fun board, but it is time soon and I feel, that's what it sucks is like you get this board and eventually you like get everything perfect with the complete because you're always getting different things like wheels, board, different timing. And now I have to get wheels and a board. So that basically means I'm going to have to try to find that sweet spot again, hopefully. And I don't know. I think I might just get another polar board. I think the wood is made in Mexico from what I remember. I'm pretty sure. So I do like the wood. I think it's really good. It's stood up. It's time. It's really sturdy besides the pressure cracks, which is just recently I've started to notice everything else has been really good. I'm getting razor tail a little bit, not too bad, but yeah, it's definitely time to mix up the board. So I figured like, this would be kind of a, a raw video really quick, just to update you guys on what my board setup is right now. Let me know what wheels should I try? Should I try the NFG wheels and maybe do a little review on them and try to find the, the truth to the rumor? Is he the inventor of Swiftfire Formula fours and is that a cheaper way to get wheels? I don't, I don't know. I don't want to like cut corners, but anyways, let me know down below what you guys think. Any questions about skateboard 
complete skateboard setup. I'll do another video once I do get my wheels and my skateboard. We can kind of break that down as well. See you guys in the next one. Mash.